Hello friends, hope you are doing well. In this video, I am starting Bark interview question series. In this video, I am going to discuss five interview questions. And if you want me to continue, please do comment. Then only I keep making these videos for all the questions that are available in Quora. So these are all the questions. Let's begin our video. First question is draw iron carbon diagram up to 2.1% is carbon. Pretty easy, right? Now we have iron carbon diagram and the next question is we need to consider 0.65% is carbon which is nothing but this is 0.77 right and this is 0.54 so we take an alloy in between these two so this is our 0.65% alloy now we need to draw a cooling curve for this particular alloy so let's draw the curve friends cooling curve is between temperature and time so first let's look at all the transformation temperatures this is one temperature right this is another temperature the last is the tectoid temperature. So now the liquid is at a higher temperature initially at T is equals to 0 and it cools normally until this temperature and at this temperature what is happening to liquid is giving liquid plus gum. So it's two phase region slope changes because some amount of heat is being released right recalcitrant heat so it goes like this and from here on friends we have a single phase region which cools so it cools like a pure metal right until this point. Now again we have two phase region friends so here it goes gamma giving gamma plus alpha at this friends this temperature is a eutectoid temperature, right? So here we need to understand this. I'm going to explain while here the slope remains constant for a certain amount of time, and then slope again goes down. Now we have cooling curve, friends. Next question is we need to explain why I have drawn curve like this using phase rule. Our phase rule is friends p plus f is equal to c plus two and two represents temperature and pressure. And we know these phase diagrams are drawn at one atmospheric pressure, so pressure is already constant, so it's no more a variable. So now we have a condensed phase rule p plus f is equal to c plus one. Let's apply this rule for this complete system, friends. P, keep P as P and F as F. Number of components in this system is always constant, which is iron and carbon. So number of components is 2. And we have one other variable, which is pressure. So P plus F is equal to 2 plus 1. Now I can write degrees of freedom, I can write for this particular system as 3 minus number of phases, right? Now let's start the curve, friends. We are here, liquid is continuously cooling until this temperature. And here we are having gamma plus liquid, right? Liquid is giving us gamma plus liquid. Now to apply the phase rule, how many phases we are having, friends? Liquid and gamma, right? At this particular temperature, this liquid, liquid, both are the same and liquid plus gamma, we are having two different phases. So if you put P as 2, degrees of freedom, you are having 1, which means this transformation can occur over a range of temperature. Now we are here, friends, from this point to this point, this is single phase, right? If you put P as 1, you are getting F as 2. So here also, transformation doesn't have to occur at a constant temperature because we are having degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom means this transformation can occur. Here we are having 2, which means composition can also be a variable for gamma transformation. So now we are here friends, we came under this point, here also the same thing which happened here. Here we are getting gamma is giving gamma plus alpha, same we are having two number of phases. So degrees of freedom becomes one here. So again the transformation goes like this. Now friends, you, I hope you all know this line is a straight line, right? This is a straight line representing eutectoid reaction. Even though we consider this as eutectoid point, whatever the reaction occurs through this line, that reaction is called eutectoid reaction because alpha, whatever alpha is pro eutectoid alpha remains the same. But here gamma of this composition gives us alpha of this composition and the cementate composition. So, we know eutectoid is an invariant reaction. Now, here we are having how many phase friends? Gamma, parallel, which means alpha plus cementate. So, overall here we are having three phases. So, at this particular transformation, we have degrees of freedom, zero. So, as long as the small reaction, eutectoid reaction takes place, that has to occur at a constant temperature, followed by the, after the transformation, we have alpha and parallel, which undergo normal cooling. Metallurgic crisp telegram loop. And the next question is derivation of phase rule. I hope everyone knows this, right? I'm just, just simply mentioning these are the total number of variables. These are dependent variables because of equality of chemical potentials. So after solving for f, we get this. And as we discussed, this is a condensed phase rule. If we keep pressure as constant, so we get condensed phase rule. We use condensed phase rule because almost all the phase diagrams are drawn at constant pressure. Friends, next question is draw the microstructure of 0.2 and 0.38 percent as carbon steel set room temperature. Friends, we know at temp room temperature we're having alpha and Light, right so from the level rule we can say 0.2 positive carbon steel is having more alpha and 0.3 is having comparatively less alpha so this is parallel and this is ferrite so the main difference between these two is amount of parallel increases and amount of ferrite decreases so the next question is how do we differentiate friends we get this microstructure after etching right so we etched our samples and we got these differences now we how can we differentiate ferrite looks lighter in color and parallel looks alternate layers or it looks darker in color friends this Friends, in optical microscope, the phase contrast is comes due to the depth difference, right? So whenever we have depth differences, whatever the light usually gets reflected into object but the light that is getting into this has not reflected back into the eyepiece. So these look these areas look darker. But this is not only the case, friends. If, if we have one outer outward protrusions like this, then also light does not reach from these areas. Okay. So friends, if our surface is like this, all these areas look 
dark because they won't reflect back the light back to the eyepiece. So this looks like light, this looks lighter in color, this looks darker in color because the light from these parts are not reaching the eyepiece. Friends, if we consider the etching surface of plain carbon steel, it looks like this. This is ferrite friends and cementite is an intermetallic compound, right? It won't easily get dissolved in the etching. So during grinding and etching, these rods stay like this. And alpha is being soft, it gets removed during grinding and all the operations. So friends, here everyone thinks cementite is having depth because of that only it looks darker, but that is not true friends. Intermetallics being hard and stable, they remain like this. So whatever the light comes, falls on these places, it will get again reflected back. But whatever the light falls on this, it goes back. And along with that, here we have some shadow of this cementite platelets, cementite rods. So because of this, all this area, wherever we are having cementite plates, that looks darker and the remaining looks lighter. Friends, here I want you to understand one thing. If you etch ferrite, it etches white. If you etch cementite, it also etches white. See, if we are etching both looking white, but because of this height difference, only cementite looking darker. But if you take white cast iron where the matrix is cementite, their cementite looks white because their cementite is the matrix. But here cementite being rods and they are not getting removed in the process of grinding and polishing. That is why these are looking darker. Friends, you need to understand the color is just how the light is getting reflected from the sample. Friends, the next question is draw G versus X curve at 880 degrees centigrade for 0.28% carbon. So friends, 0.28% is, uh, we can consider it like that. Right? So at this particular temperature we are drawing friends, at this temperature what are all the existing phases friends? We have alpha, this is 910 degrees right? So below that is our 880 degrees centigrade. So this is the temperature we are drawing. At this temperature all possible phases are alpha, alpha plus gamma, gamma, gamma plus Fe3C and cementite. Now if you try drawing free energy versus composition diagrams. So here this is increasing percentage of carbon and this is the free energy right? First let's draw alpha. So this is alpha goes like this and next cementite is that way right? Uh, Let's cemented being intermetal compound, it has a free energy like a point. But to represent it, we draw it like this so that composition this side of that side of 6.67, the free energy sharply rises. And then in between we're having gamma, right? So gamma goes like this. So friends, the common tangent gives us the equilibrium composition like friends, right? So this is one composition, and to draw another the common tangent between this, uh, consider this both intersecting. So it is like this. So at this temperature, this is for alpha. This is for gamma and this is for Fe3C. So we're having alpha here. So this is alpha, this is alpha plus gamma and here only gamma, this region right, only gamma is existing and here gamma plus Fe3C and after that we can say it is intermetal, right? right? This is Fe3C and this is carbon. So friends, this common tangent gives us the chemical potential of respective elements for that in that phases. So whenever we draw a common tangent between these two phases, which means the chemical potential of that element in that phase are both are equal. So for example, if we consider these two, this is giving chemical potential of A in alpha is equal to chemical potential of A in gamma. Similarly, this point gives us the chemical potential of B in alpha is equal to the chemical potential of gamma, B in gamma. So if an element is having same chemical potential in all the phases, that is what we call in equilibrium. This is what differentiates alloy system from pure metal system. In pure metal system, we use equality of free energies. But in the alloy system, that we cannot apply because this is free energy of alpha, this is free energy of gamma. So if I want to find out where the free energies of alpha and gamma are equal, which is this, right? But system wants to lower its free energy. So system has a chance to lower its free energy by decomposing into or by changing their respective compositions to these two points. So here, equality of free energies does not decide the equilibrium, but equality of chemical potentials, which is this common tangent, what decides the equilibrium. Friends, now let's look at the common tangent. Let's consider a two-phase mixture. So here we are having alpha and beta, A and B are the constituents of our solution, B is increasing. So when you draw a common tangent, friends, this gives us the equilibrium composition, right? We call this composition, composition of alpha in equilibrium with beta. And this composition is composition of beta in equilibrium with alpha. And these are the chemical potentials, right? This axis, the intercept group is chemical potential. So this point is nothing but chemical potential of A in alpha is equal to, this is the same, right? So chemical potential of A in beta. This is what gives us the equilibrium of the phases, right? Similarly, this is chemical potential of B chemical potential of B in alpha is equal to chemical potential of B in beta. So now we got this answer. Now we need to derive common tangent equation. For a ta tangent, we just need, for example, y is equal to mx plus c, right? This is a, a line equation. Consider this as origin. Now, so this is y-axis and this is the y-intercept. So I can take y-intercept as u of a in alpha or same beta because both are equal in this case. And we, we need slope, right? So what is this friends? This point is origin. And so this point becomes x is 0 and y is mu in alpha. And go to the other end. What is this point, friends? This is 1, right? Because here x b is 0, but x b is 1 here. So 1, comma mu b of alpha or beta both are same. 
now we have slope y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 the slope is nothing but alpha. mu b of alpha minus mu a of alpha so this is slope right i know y is equal to mx plus c now i know c i know slope so let's substitute now the common tangent equation vanish at y axis free energy right free energy of the system is given by this is slope this is intercept now it looks very easy friends but this is a catch here we need to find out mu a in alpha comma mu b in alpha because both are equals to mu b in beta this is equals to mu a in beta so we need to find out these values so how are we going to find those values 